But hey, uh, as I begin this morning, uh, we're going to take a little break from our Philippian series. But I have a really important question. So this is, this is serious, all right? I need to know whether currently, if you're a student or a kid, or if you can remember back to when you were a kid, I need to know which camp many of you fall in, okay, one or the other. Who here was the hot lunch crew at school? You almost always had hot lunch. Raise your hand. We got a few hands. All right. All right. All right. So put on, all right. On the flip side, who is the cold lunch crew? You almost always pack cold lunch. This is a big deal. Okay. Growing up, I was mostly a hot lunch kid uh, for the most part. That's what I would do when I went to school for me, except for one very important event that would happen once or twice during the school year. It's two words, Darkie. Field trips. All right. Field trips I was always, always cold lunch, of course, we packed the lunch, and here's the deal, your lunch on a field trip in elementary school was potentially a, a, a social status situation. Uh, what you packed, what was in your bag was a big deal, and so I'm going to reminisce a little bit, I'm going to look back uh, into mine, and so I packed a lunch today, uh, and we're going to see what mom put in the bag, all right? So first of all, we have, um, oh, here we go, we got the classic PB&J. It's not bad. I I prefer the turkey or ham, but if you put mayo and it's a hot day, the mayo gets warm and nobody wants salmonella, Uh, and so we'll go with it. Uh, You got it. The banana. Uh, Need vitamin K, need potassium. For some people, it keeps you regular. For some people, it does the opposite, Uh, but but we're we're doing okay. We're on an okay start. Um, Then she packed me Cheez-Its. I don't like Cheez-Its. Mom must have had a busy week. It happens sometimes. I love her. Uh, so I'll cut her, cut her some slack. So maybe we'll put those over here. We'll see what we can do. Um, so here's, here's the next thing. There's potentially, what I'm going to pull out next, could make or break and actually could put you over the top and, and, and what you bring to drink, like on field trips. So uh, I always loved, water is always good. Moms are always good about water. Kool-Aid Cool Burst. Remember the little plastic, you know, twist it off. Those were especially cherry. That was the gold right there. Or if you wanted to, like, just catapult your social status, what if your mom or dad packed pop? Like, that was the ultimate tradable commodity when it came to field trip cold lunches. But, but today my mom packed Powerade uh, because she loves me and she knows, I, she knows I need electrolytes. All right, so I'm done, right? No. You know me. There's still got to be dessert. <laughs> so uh, let's look in there. Let's see what mom packed. So this is a big deal. We're going back to elementary school. Hostess cupcakes. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hostess cupcakes. Now, not a bad spread that my mom packed here, but here's the deal. We still got the cheese. So if you, you maybe you're like me, you're like, okay, I got to find, so find a buddy to trade with. So here's the, you start out, out kind of small. You're like, all right, dude, I, you got Doritos. I love Doritos. I'll give you the cheese it straight up for the Doritos. He looks at me and he's like, are you stupid? Nobody trades the cheese it's for, okay. All right, I'll give you half of my peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the Cheez-Its for the Doritos. Ah, I don't know. I, you're, they, okay, you got to pull out the big guns. Here's what we're going to do. The Cheez-Its and one cupcake for your Doritos and a fruit roll-up. And so then you make the trade, and it's a deal. And like cold lunch, hot lunch, there's something about packing lunches. Uh, and here's the deal. When, I looked at, when my mom would pack me lunches, sometimes I, I viewed that as kind of her extension of, of how much she loved me. She knew what I liked. She knew what I needed. She knew uh, even sometimes that she just wanted to give me extra blessing, and every once in a while there'd be a couple bucks in there that I could spend something at the, uh, at the snack shop or at the gift shop. I could buy something. So that was an extension of that. Um, it's probably not cold lunches for you, but there's probably things, there's probably people in your life who've been packing lunches for you for years. They invest in you. And I'm going to use that phrase a lot uh, today. But they invest in you. There are people in your life who have day after day made an investment in you as a sign of their belief in you, as a sign of their love in you. Some of you have been packing lunches for kids in this church for years. Through nursery, through Sunday school, through being a coach, through being a, a, a life group leader, through being an usher, things like that as a coach. This morning we're going to look at a story where packing lunches, where a packed lunch made a pretty big impact, bigger than they could ever imagine. So if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 16, and uh, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here together. Lord, this has been, I've said it, I'm not, we all go through weeks. This was one of those weeks for me. Uh, but Lord, I know that you're faithful. I know that you're good. We sing about your greatness over 
and over and over again today. And I thank you that you are great, that you are in control. And so, Lord, I pray that you would speak through this service. Holy Spirit, you'd speak through this sermon and do and accomplish what you want to do. So the thing I want you to get today, the thing I want you that we're going to keep going back to, actually it's a phrase that I think would be kind of cool if it caught on in our church uh, as a sign of encouragement, as a sign of saying, hey, don't quit, is keep packing lunches. Everyone say, keep packing lunches. Keep packing lunches. And the story is one you've never, ever read before. It's found in John chapter 6. Uh, it's the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. It's on the screen behind me. If you have a Bible, and you can read from it there in your seat. Here's what it says. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people uh, followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up to a mountainside and he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where should we buy bread for these people to eat? And he asked this only to test him because Jesus already knows what he wanted to do. He already knew what he was going to do. Verse 7, Philip answered him, eight months' wages would not buy bread for each one to have a bite. There's your accountant, there's your administrative person, there's your type A in the group. Uh, Verse 8, another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and he said, hey, there's a boy. He's got five loaves. He's got two fish. And, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. And that was, there was plenty of grass in that place. And the men sat down. And there was about 5,000 men. Jesus then took the loaves and he gave thanks. And he distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. And they all had their full. And they all had that with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. And so they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. So in this story, this is not a new concept, but I'm I'm beginning to agree more and more that I hear about this, that that one of the, the heroes, the ultimate hero, of course, is Jesus. Jesus is the one who does the miracle. That's what it's about. But one of the heroes in this story is the person who packed that boy's lunch. The person, we don't know much about them. We do know that they made sure that this little boy had the stuff that he needed to get through his day. She she, she or he fed him and took care of him. We know that that's what it is. As I look across this room, I see people who have packed lunches day after day, faithfully, week after week, month after month, year after year. And you guys continue to be faithful. You're investing in others so that their faith can grow. You're investing in others so that they can succeed, so they can be who God created them to be. There's also people in this room, I have no doubt and I know as well, that maybe you're out packing a whole lot of lunches. Maybe you're new here. Maybe you're still searching out this faith thing about Jesus. Maybe you're used to other people doing the work and you're just letting them do it. You could fall in any one of those categories. Uh, But again, as I said, regardless of which group you are in, I challenge you, my challenge for you today is to keep packing lunches. And quickly, I want to I walk through a few ways. How do we keep packing lunches? Number one, uh, as we go through this, in this story, we, we focus on the boys sometimes, and we should, because this little boy gave all that he had. He had five loaves and two fish, right? And so he gave it to Jesus. And, and, and if we're going to keep packing lunches, we need to first look at our hands. Look at your hands. Look at what God has given you. Start with what you have. I feel like I tell you this often, but you can't hear it enough. All Jesus wants is you. All Jesus wants is you. That's all we ask for. We want you to be you. We, we're not asking you to be someone that you're not. Jesus is not asking for you to, to change and be. It's not like all of a sudden, uh, I don't know where you went, but if Pastor Matt, all of a sudden, God's like, hey, Pastor Matt, I, I, I was going to call you to reach your neighbors, Pastor Matt. But you know what? You're just not as funny as Pastor Sam. And you're obviously, I don't think he's even in here. I totally wrote that down. I was going to, oh, he's right there. There he is. And you're obviously... You're, you're obviously not quite as good looking, but I guess I just can't. We love, we love to pick on each other. But like, God's not gonna, God doesn't want Matt to be somebody he's not. God made Matt who he is, and the gifts that he's given, and the talents that he's given. And same with you. So often, we don't look at our hands. We don't use what God has given us, because we're so busy looking at, oh man, well they got that. Well, I don't have that. Well, I can and we, we compare, and we get caught in that trap. Look at your hands, and you know what? I've done that too. And guess who else has? Really important people from the Bible. There's this guy named Moses. You ever heard of Moses before? He's in the beginning of the Bible. Moses, God, he, Moses flees. He's out, in the, he's out in the desert. He's taking care of sheep by the mountains. And he all of a sudden sees this bush. And this bush is on fire, but it's not burning up. 
And God begins to speak to him from this bush and says, I'm calling you to deliver my people. I'm calling you to be uh, my answer to their prayers. I'm going to use you mightily. And this is the exchange that they have in Exodus chapter 4 in verse 1. It's behind me. It says, Moses answers. God's saying, I'm calling you, Moses. Here's what you need to do. Deliver my people. Go to Pharaoh. Talk to him. I'm going to use you. Here's what Moses says. He goes, he answered, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen to me and they say, the Lord didn't appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And if you keep reading the story, I'm not going to read the whole story, but Moses had a staff in his hand and God said, throw it down. And so he throws it down and becomes a snake and Moses picks it up and goes back to his staff. Then Moses says, take your hand and put it in your coat. Puts it in his coat, pulls it out. It's covered in leprosy. He says, put it back in. He puts it back in and it's completely whole again. Moses gave God his excuses. God said, I'm not calling you for what you don't have. I'm calling you for what you do have. Because I will equip you. Because I will empower you. Because I will give you everything that you need. Look at your hands and use what God has given you. And that's my first challenge for that. If we're going to keep packing lunches, look at your hands. Start somewhere. Do something. Pick up trash. Mow the lawn. Help clean up different things. Help your neighbor. Pick up, bring in your neighbor's mail. Whatever. Do something. Serve people. Start somewhere. For me, uh, I was at family camp a couple weeks ago. We go to family camp every year, and there's there's a couple that uh, I was really good friends with their daughter growing up uh, in youth group, and they come to camp one day a year. And so I saw them. We're at the, I think it was the July 4th picnic or the missions lunch, whatever day it was, but Lowell and Joanne Jager are over there. Uh, and so I go over to them, and we start talking. And one of the things that they do for me, since I ever got called, since I was ever called to be a pastor, Lola said, you're the pastor that I adopt to pray for all the time. And so anytime I see Lola, he's like, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And I don't see him. I see him once a day or once a year for maybe an hour. But I know that Lola is always praying for me. And that in that way, he's using what he has to keep packing my lunch. And that, that means a lot to me, that Lowell and Joanne are praying for me. That I know that when, even if they don't even know, even the stuff with, I went through with Julene maybe this week, I believe that they were praying for me. Because they took what they had in their hands and they did what they could do. If you're going to keep packing lunches, look at what's in your hands. So let's go back to the boy, uh, the person who, who packed the boy's lunch. Uh, again, we don't know who it is. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say it's probably his mother. Uh, who, who packed her lunch, uh, who packed this little boy's lunch. And I want you to think about this. How many, do you, how many of you think that, that this was the first time she'd ever packed his lunch? Probably not. She had probably been packing. This probably wasn't the first time she'd baked bread, uh, set aside fish, taken care of him. She, who knows how many hundreds, maybe even thousands of lunches she had packed at this point in her life. And that brings me to my second point. Today could be your day for a miracle. Today could be your day for a miracle. But when this woman used what she had in her hands and she stayed faithful in the spot that God had placed her, it set her son up to be a part of a miracle because she kept packing lunches. Keep packing lunches. Dad, I know you keep getting up early and you're going to a job that doesn't always appreciate you, but keep packing lunches for your family. Moms, I know you've heard that story and picked up that same toy 1,200 times today. Keep packing lunches in your kids. My mom was a single mom for a few years. She worked and she loved on me and she sewed in me. She kept packing lunches day after day. Sir, keep meeting with that younger, younger, newer believer in Christ and meet with them earlier and help shape them, help them develop their faith. Keep packing their lunches. Ma'am, keep leading that Bible study and you're helping those, those people to experience the faith and, and the freedom in Christ that you found. Keep packing lunches. Today could be your day for a miracle. Today could be your day for, it's the faithfulness in the everyday that opens up the door for the unexpected. The faithfulness in the everyday that opens up the door for the unexpected. It's the faithfulness in the mundane that opens up the door for a miracle. Amen? Today could be your day for a miracle. And I'm not even necessarily talking about a miracle in your life. Because as far as we know, we don't know the person who packed this lunch if they even benefited from this. And sometimes, simply by you being faithful to keep packing lunches, to keep doing what God's called you to do, to keep thriving in the position where you're at, you're setting someone else. You're a catalyst for somebody else's miracle. And they're going to experience a blessing from God because of your faithfulness, because you're obedient, because you don't stop, because you don't quit. That's the beauty of serving Jesus. That's the beauty of saying, hey, all right, God, whatever you want me to do. Jesus asked me to serve because it breaks the power of me. 
Because the more I focus on me, the less I experience of him, the less I experience his power and his blessings. Don't quit. Keep packing lunches. Today could be the day for your miracle. And that's what could happen. And there's, there's, there's some verses. I, I put up these scripture verses here. Next slide. Um, I'm not going to read all those stories. But in Joshua chapter 5 and 6, what if they only marched around Jericho six times? You don't know the story? The seventh time, the whole wall came down and they won the battle. In 2 Kings chapter 5, Naaman, who was a great leader, wanted to have all this pomp and circumstance, wanted God to, the man, man of God to wave his hand over him and heal all his diseases. He had leprosy. But he, the prophet said, go wash in the Jordan seven times. What if he only washed there six times? He misses out on his miracle. What if in Acts chapter 2, Jesus said, stay and wait because the comforter is coming because I'm going to clothe you with power on high. What if they stop praying the day before Pentecost? We're, not, we're potentially not sitting here. Do not stop packing lunches. Do not quit. Today could be your day for a miracle. Each of these biblical examples shows us that if we keep doing what we're supposed to do, it puts us in position to experience a miracle. I, I told Andrew's like, are you going to share? I'll share a little bit. One of the, this was a great trip for me to, to Colorado. It was fun to watch our kids step up and thrive and serve. I was just so impressed at, at the grace and the patience that Denver Dream Center had with people. Because they deal in a ministry that people mess up a lot. And people abuse grace a lot. And people fail a lot. And they never gave up on people. We had different people would come in during our lunch times or different meetings and say, hey, I was down and out. I had, all my, I had abused my family. I had taken their money. I had lied to them. I'd done, but, but people didn't give up on me. People didn't quit. People didn't stop. Hey, this person, this, I was hooked on drugs, and I, and I, I did this, and I, I turned my back on everyone, but the Denver Dream Center stayed there. They didn't quit. They were there when they needed me, when I needed to get bailed out, when I needed this, when I needed that. And God really challenged me on this trip to just keep being patient, to not stop, to not give up on people. Because sometimes it's easy to, to get frustrated and say, I did enough, I'm done. But what if I keep packing lunches for a couple more days and God does a breakthrough and freedom comes and grace comes and hope comes and lives are transformed because we saw people after people after people transform. Don't give up on people. Show grace. Keep packing lunches. Today could be your day for a miracle. There's an interesting piece of information, if you go back to John chapter 6, that the Holy Spirit on purpose left in the Bible. If you're reading that verse, in verse 13, it says, after everybody ate, everybody was full, they had their fish sandwich smorgasbord. Jesus says, hey guys, go collect all the leftovers from everybody, okay? Uh, here's what I want you to do. And then they did it. And there were how many baskets left over? Twelve. How much food did we start out with? Five loaves and two fish. Last time I checked, I'm actually, I'm a fairly intelligent person, I'm not going to lie, but I know that five loaves and two fish do not equal 12 baskets of leftovers. And this is a kingdom principle. If you're writing this down, get out your pens, write it down. And this is my last point. It says, here's the deal. God's leftovers are always more than our abundance. God's leftovers are always more than our abundance. If I give all of me, God will always have more. His leftovers are more than everything I can give. That's huge. And that's what the boy experienced. He gave all that he had. And God took it and he blessed it. And there was exponential amount of blessing left over afterwards. Come on. Don't be Minnesotan right now. That is awesome. When we give our all, when we give everything, and I get it. Because I have to push myself to keep giving all. As the kids would say, can't stop, won't stop. Right? Alex, like, never say that again, ever. Don't ever do that again. Don't quit. We are called to give our all. Hold nothing back because when we give our all, when we give out of our, because our abundance, when we give everything, it still doesn't even come close to equaling what God can do. Amen? Whoops, sorry. You want a verse to back up this challenge to keep packing lunches? Turn to Galatians chapter 6. I want you to turn there. It's on the screen behind me. You can cheat if you want to. I'm doing NLT. Galatians chapter 6. Here's what it says. Paul writes this. It says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing 
if we don't give up. I can't think of a better verse that says keep packing lunches. Here's why that verse is in there. Because we get tired. We get tired, let's just be honest. There are days if you follow Jesus for a long time, or maybe even you're new, you get tired. Sometimes there's days where I'm like, really, I have to be the one to do that again? Really, God? But I'm doing all this for you, and I whine to God a little bit. There's days where I'm like, that person didn't show up and didn't do what they say they're going to do, and now I have to scramble and I have to fill a role that I shouldn't have to fill. I get frustrated. There's days when my kids fight over the same dumb thing that they fight about all the time, and I still have to disciple them and love them, and try not to throw them outside and say, figure it out. <laughs> we get tired. But guess what? That's what happens. But what, what does Paul write? He says, act just the right time. You will receive the blessing. Do not give up. Do not quit. Do not stop. But Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, don't get tired in doing good. If, I, if you're tired in, in, in this place this morning, I get it. I understand. But don't stop packing lunches. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't say, I did my part. It's your turn. Because we don't stop. And I'm talking in a healthy biblical way. I've, you can go have a conversation about, what about Sabbath? What about, I get all that. I'm not disqualifying that. But I'm saying, so often we, I can get caught up and saying, I'm done. I've met with this person. There's a student I'm still working with. And I'm like, I've talked to this person for years. And they, it, they just don't get it. And I'm frustrated. So much I'm spitting. <laughs> I'm frustrated. But God's like, you cannot give up on them. If you give up on them, that's just reconfirms everything they're already believing in their brain. Everything they're already believing in their faith. And so as much as I don't want to, God's saying, don't stop. Keep packing lunches. My abundance, my leftovers are greater than your abundance. I can do more than you can hope or imagine. And it's this principle, as I'm getting ready to wrap up, that has me excited about what's happening in this church. I'm excited for the future of our church because we just brought on Pastor Matt and Nicole. And we brought on Pastor Sarah and Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, I am fired up about what God wants to do in this church, not because they're going to be equippers and trainers of people. One of my new roles here, you, if you read the bulletin, which kudos to you if you do, because that makes Janelle love you even more. Uh, but if you look in the back, I have a new role. It's called executive pastor. One of my roles is to be able to equip volunteers, and, and I'll be reaching out to some of you, to say, hey, where's your spot? Where do you fit? Where, do you, where are you going to serve? How are you going to find your place inside and outside this place? Because I want to see you experience all God has for you. Amen? Amen. I'm excited for where we're headed. I'm pumped where this church is heading. There's an amazing season, amazing season of blessing and growth that I'm believing is going to happen in kids, in students, in adults, in moms, in dads, in the men's ministry, in the women's ministry, in everything that happens in here to go out and to impact the world because of where God wants us to go. Amen? But that does not happen if we stop packing lunches. If we give up, if we quit now, if we don't do what God's called us to do, then we're going to miss out. And I don't want that to happen. So as I close, and everybody says amen. <laughs> for the record, thanks for sticking with me. I finished this late last night. Uh, here's what I want to do. I'm going to ask Rob to come up. Rob's just going to play quietly behind me. Guys, I hope you get this. There's people in my life that have not given up on me. There's people that, that and if I can just be blunt, honestly, even part of this, be someone that someone runs to for encouragement. There are people that suck life out of you, and there are people that give life. Be a giver of life. I'm a words of affirmation guy. You guys all know that. But I love being around people that just naturally, not just not puff me up, because I don't need that. I'm past that stage for the most part. And <laughs> I'll be honest. But but I but people who generally invest in me and like truly speak life and hope and truth over me, I, I thrive to be around those people. Because I know that they will make me more like Jesus. They'll model it and they'll challenge me to be better. And so when we keep packing lunches, that puts us in position for people. And I'm going to ask our ushers, I'm going to put our ushers to work here. Uh, they're, they're going to start passing out brown paper lunch bags, all right? Ideally, I have enough, Lord willing. We'll see if I 
have a miracle of the 5,000 or if I just guessed really well. You guys just start handing them out to everybody. Whoop. So uh, everyone's going to get a bag. Once you get your bag, I'll tell you what to do with it. And so you guys can help too. Um, take this bag. Don't throw it away. Uh, some of you are going to be too... Thank you, sir. Hopefully I don't need this. If I need a sex you can come up front. Um, here's the deal. Some of you might be too cool to do this. That's fine. But I always like knowing the why behind the what. I'm a big guy that I like to know the why. I mean, I'll do stuff. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a really good number two. I follow, I'm loyal. I follow directions. I can do what I need to do. But I like knowing why. And in just a moment, you're going to have you're going to have an opportunity to, to write down some of your whys. And if you got a bag, and as you're waiting for your bag, I want you to think. I want you to write two words on this bag. There should be pair, pair, pairs, pens in the chairs in front of you. I want you to write the word inside and put an underline underneath it, and, one, and have a column there, and, and then write outside, put a line underneath, underneath it. Okay? So you're going to get your bags, write down inside and outside. And in just a moment, Rob's just going to play quietly. We're not going to sing. It's just going to be you and Jesus. And what I want you to do as soon as you get your bag and as soon as I pray, after you write inside, outside, I want you to begin to write down the names of the people inside this church that you've been packing lunches for to remind you of why you're doing it. And then I want you to flip over to the outside column and begin to think about people outside of these walls that you need to keep packing lunches for the people you're investing in, the people at your job, the people, some family members that you just don't really want to talk to at the next family thing. But you know you got to keep packing lunches. And there'll be a lot of crinkling and writing. That's okay. God's good. You can turn them up just a little bit, Josiah, if you want to. So as soon as everybody got, is anybody, are we good? Everybody got one? The Lord provides. Amen. So on your sheets, inside, outside, I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to be quiet because I'm going to think too. I, and, and Lyle was nice enough to give me a bag as well. The why. These are the people that you're going to keep. Could be your kids. Could be whoever God puts on your heart, all right? And then what, what I want you to do with this is put this in a place when you're done. So when you, when you feel like saying, man, I am done. This is, God, seriously, again? Again, I have to deal with this. You go back to that bag and go, keep packing lunches. Keep packing lunches. You see your, you go pick up your kid in the nursery. Don't do it today because it'll make no sense. Like, keep packing lunches. I'll be like, all right, that's weird. Can I have my kid, you know? Um, but encourage people. When you see them, encourage people. Encourage others in this church. Keep packing lunches. You're making a difference. Don't stop. Don't quit. So Heavenly Father, I thank you right now as people are beginning to write names down of the people that they're investing in, that they're packing lunches for day after day after day after day after day after day. God, you are a faithful God. Lord, I pray that we would have people inside and outside these walls. God, of people we're investing in, people that we're reaching out to. And Lord God, I pray that you would just remind us the why behind the what. We at church, we as a church, I as a pastor, I'm not just looking for people to fill roles here. I want people to thrive. I want people to operate in their giftings. I want people to look at their hands and say, this is what I can give. I'm going to give it for the Lord, and he's going to take it, and he's going to possibly do a miracle with it, and he's definitely going to do more with my all than, than I could ever do on my own because God's leftovers are always more than my abundance. God, help me when I get tired. Help us when I, we get tired. God, as we've gone through a building program, God, as we've gone through a search committee, as we've gone through just different things in life, God, just remind us of why we do this. As we heard kids on the stage, they had core prayer partners of people that invested in them, that prayed with them, that believed for them, and God showed up on their trip because people packed their lunches before the trip and during the trip, and I pray after the trip. And God, for that person who's been packing lunches for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, God, encourage him to not stop. So speak to us now, in Jesus' name. Many of you are already writing. That's awesome. I'm just going to be quiet for a little bit. I want you to look at your list. My hope, my prayer, is that there are names on both sides. Uh, maybe 
You look at your list, and one side's pretty lopsided. It's either all inside or it's all outside, and a little bit, a little bit. We need both. Both are biblical. My prayer is that you would go back to this list and that you would find that balance. And, and again, if you're here and you, you don't have a role, our prayer is that you would have a role inside and outside of the church, a spot where you can thrive in your gifts. And outside meaning outside these walls, nothing affiliated with here. Just the Holy Spirit says, hey, you know what? Get plugged into the food shelf. One of the, Courtney was like at the food shelf. She's like, do we have to go in Colorado? Do we have to leave? This is so much fun. And she, they loved it. And I looked at Courtney and I looked at the kids. I go, guys, and I was kind of sarcastic. I'm not going to lie. I go, do you realize we have a food shelf in our town? <laughs> you can work here too. I go, oh yeah. Guys, there's so many needs. And this isn't about having to serve and do every single thing. It's about looking in your hands and using what God's given you. But God has placed people inside and outside these walls for you to minister to. And my challenge is that you would keep packing lunches. And, and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you can't write down this list, you, you're not investing in someone because honestly you don't have faith in Jesus. Doesn't mean you're a bad person as far as like you're not trying to be this terrible person, but you've never submitted your life. You can be a great person and not be a follower of Jesus. We all need Jesus. That's why he came. Because he repaired the relationship that I can't do, that we can't do. And so if you're here today, I'm going to challenge you to, to find me at the end of the service, and I would love to pray with you to invite Christ into your life, to start the journey, to start the process of, hey, I can pack some lunches. I can do something. So here's how I want us to close. I'm going to ask you to stand up. I'm going to ask you to hold your bag in the air. All right? Keep packing lunches. Keep packing lunches. All right? Don't stop. Don't quit. Use what God's given you. Today could be your day for a miracle. And God's leftovers are always greater than my abundance, than your abundance. Heavenly Father, we lift up these names. God, these people that we are investing in, these people that you put in our life for a reason. God, it's not our strength, it's yours. But Lord, I ask you that we would not quit. God, that we keep being faithful. God, that we as a church would operate. Imagine, God, if every single person in this church operated in their gifting inside and outside these walls, we would transform, not in our power, but for your glory, we would transform this church, this community, this state, this world for your kingdom. God, that's my prayer that every one of us would be operating exactly how you ordained and created us to be. Lord, if someone's searching, if someone's struggling, where do I fit, God? Help us as a church to help them. God, I pray for people outside these walls, co-workers, God, family members, that lady at McDonald's that I see when I go through the drive through God, I would, build, I would keep packing, all of us would keep packing lunches, God, for your kingdom, for your glory. God, that you'd be lifted up. Lord, let us not grow tired in doing good. But at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. Lord, bless these leaders. Thank you for this church. This church is a faithful church. This church is a blessing church. I am honored to be here. God, I am thankful. I do thank you often for the privilege of being able to be a minister here alongside other people. But God, I know that you have more for us. You have more for all of us together. Lord, and I do pray if there's somebody who doesn't know you today, Jesus, that they would take, they would take, have the guts, I'm put it out there, have the guts to come down and talk to me. I'd love to pray with them because this is a really cool day to start that journey. And so, Lord, draw them. For the rest of us, Lord, be with us. Lord, I do, again, pray for my wife that she'd recover quickly. God, that you'd have your hand upon her body, Lord, and that you'd help us. And I thank you for this church coming around us and friends coming around us and supporting us. Lord, you're, you're an awesome God. We love you, we praise you, we give you our day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Put this somewhere where you are going to look at it again. God bless you.